Growing up in the country, Nadine and I both had a love of the outdoors. Fishing and farming were two things we did well together. We bought our first farm with a friend in 1972. The farm was outside Hutto and turned out to be a great stress reliever for both of us. In 1978, we moved to our farm outside of Pflugerville, where we started farming it ourselves in 1980. The locals thought we were crazy. Nadine smoked Swisher Sweet cigars at the time. More than one driver nearly went in the ditch looking at her driving the tractor with brassy blonde hair, cat rim glasses, and smoking a cigar. We farmed successfully for six years until my illness in 1986. Always an avid and gifted gardener, mom's flower beds and vegetable gardens served as a sanctuary and blessing to many. Neighbors and strangers alike were recipients of fresh corn, beautiful flower bouquets, pear bread, jelly, or whatever she had to share. She shared with the neighbors, with the local nursing homes, and with random people who might wander up the driveway looking for corn or a neighbor they couldn't find. Nadine was driven to leave the world a better place than she found it. One of her most important endeavors was her long-term commitment to building the Pflugerville Community Library. She was one of a handful of people who had a vision for the library in Pflugerville. After a series of bake sales and many small money events, Nadine convinced her volunteer counterparts to hold a garage sale. Many people thought she was crazy, but after the first sale made $4,800, Suddenly, Nadine's garage sale ideas made sense. From that grew the library thrift shop, which Nadine ran for 10 years. The $100,000 raised from the thrift shop was used to buy the land for the existing library site and fund ongoing operation. Mom was also a very active 4-H leader. Wherever Shannon and I went, Mom was not far behind. The group mom to many, she was a trusted adult for all kids crossing her path. After we graduated from 4-H, mom took a more active role with the Travis County 4-H scholarship. She shamelessly and tirelessly raised money to increase the 4-H endowment. It was important to her that local 4-Hers got financial support to go to the college of their choice. She was awarded the Silver Spur Award for her leadership, which is the highest honor given to an adult in 4-H. Mom was a very active volunteer at my elementary school. There she met four other Redbirds. The five of them became great friends and were known as the Queens of Bad Taste. They were famous in town, especially after those pictures. Those ladies were a strong force for good in the school and had a great time doing it. In 1992, KVU honored Mom with a Five Who Care Honorable Mention Award for outstanding local leaders for her work with the 4-H and the Pflugerville Community Library. Now for the fun stuff, fishing. We rediscovered Rockport in the 1990s. Two times a year, we would head to Rockport with our longtime friends and domino partners, Mary and Mickey Wilson. The girls were known as the hardhead hookers and Mickey and I were the piggy perch pimps. Nadine loved going to Rockport it was a great source of laughter and peace. She loved the thrill of reeling in the fish as much as the peace and quiet, the sunsets and the smell of the ocean breeze. After buying what she lovingly called the fishing shack, she actively recruited her children, friends, and family to come see what the fuss was all about. For her, the simple thrill of being on the pier with others who enjoyed it was more than enough. Actually, catching the fish was a bonus. As you've heard, Mom enjoyed travel. Every couple of years, she and Dad took Nisha and I on vacation. We traveled to New Mexico, Washington, D.C., North Carolina, and other fun destinations. In 2007, Mom and Dad took the trip of a lifetime. That was the summer that I was pregnant with Wesley. And for seven weeks, they traveled to Alaska and went camping at parks along the way. 
They thought they would stay in hotels more than half the time. When all was said and done, they spent seven nights and seven weeks in hotels. Sleeping and cooking outdoors was invigorating to Mom. Her eyes lit up when she talked about what fun they had and how special it was to spend the time alone with Dad. I think it made her feel like a kid again. For years, Mom squawked that she was not ready to be a grandparent. She simply was too young. A self-professed non-baby person, it all changed when Wesley arrived. That grandbaby changed everything and everyone. Mom loved to hold him, hug him, love him, smell him, tickle him, read to him, whatever, to be near him. It was a thrill to see. Patient, kind, yet firm, she fostered a love for reading, taught Wesley about nature, gentleness, sweetness, and generosity. Nene, as Wesley calls her, wanted to give him the world. One of her last wishes was that he would have a fort a place of his very own, a place to cultivate his strength, independence, and imagination. She loved to watch her grandson play. The sound of his laughter was one of her greatest joys. Although mom has two biological children and one grandchild, there are people scattered across the country who will tell you she played a vital and pivotal role in who they have become. She nurtured many young souls. After announcing her impending death to family and friends and the community, she was stunned and honored by the large number of people who came forth to share with her how she had touched their lives. For some, she served as an inspiration. To others, she was an icon, mentor, or safe place. Two of her greatest gifts and life lessons to the rest of us were her ability to see the very best in a situation and to remain cheerful and keep a sense of humor in the face of not so cheerful circumstances and to see clearly her many blessings. Mom always said, but for the grace of God, there goes I. She was so very grateful for the love of her husband, children, friends, and family. She frequently said with a smile, aren't we lucky? Nadine lost her 30-month battle with lung cancer in the early morning hours of August 28, 2010. She died snuggled up next to her beloved in their bed, exactly where she wanted to be. Throughout her struggle with lung cancer, she faced it with true grit, dignity, and grace. Nadine is survived by her loving husband James, daughters Nisha and Shanna, and grandson Wesley. She is also survived by her sister and friend Kathleen Cox, brothers Bill Whitson and Bob Whitson, and many cherished nieces and nephews. She is preceded in death by her parents and her siblings Louise Ressler and O.C. Whitson and nephew Vincent Whitson. Nadine faced many trials in her life. Regardless of the trial, she was intent on not allowing whatever was challenging her to rob her of the goodness of the moment. My mom died the same way she lived, on her own terms with grace and humor. Please be inspired by her life well lived. When you see a beautiful sunset, a bright flower blowing in the breeze, or reel in a fish that was a thrill to catch, or have an excellent discussion, or do something just for the fun of it, or feel a sense of a job well done, think of Nadine. Remember her with a smile. Be a red bird. <laughs>